Hey everyone, so in today's video, we are back with another save or splurge. I don't even know what episode this is because I've done so many of these on my channel. Essentially, this is my answer to the typical dupes video, but my personal motto is that dupe is a very, very overused word on the internet. And I like to just kind of do these videos. They're more like big comparison videos. They're very detail oriented. And then at the end, I, you know, analyze the formulas and I let you guys know if I think it's worth saving your money on a cheaper alternative or going ahead and splurging because I honestly think too that there are like so many cheap makeup products that are being pushed out to us as dupes but if the formula really doesn't stack up and I don't find myself reaching for it then for me it was kind of a waste on like saving my money getting the cheaper alternative does that make sense if that makes sense to you if you like my motto my name is Amanda I would love to have you back so make sure to subscribe I think you're gonna like these videos. They're some of my favorite videos to do. I feel like this comparison right here is going to give you guys a really good idea of what these videos are all about. So the Benefit Benetint, a product I have loved for a very long time. It was actually a product that I really coveted for a very long time. It's certainly not new. Apparently when they first released it, people were using it on their nipples. Did you guys <laughs> hear that floating around? I'm not going to admit whether or not I have tried that. But essentially this is a lip and cheek stain from Benefit. Uh, they have a lot of different shades, but specifically we're talking about Benetint, which is the original. It's a very pretty pinky berry shade. It's gonna look really pretty on everyone. And something that I've loved about this for so long is that on the cheeks in specific, it is actually a really easy product to use. And I find that not all cheek stains can you literally draw onto the cheeks and it not kind of leave a streak of stain. It washes out really prettily and it's actually not as super, super drying or pigmented the way that I think some lip and cheek stains are. Now, I will say my preference is using this as a cheek stain product. I love it because during the summer, it feels like nothing on the skin. And sometimes you just don't like that feeling of product on your skin in the summer. It also lasts really well. And in general, I just find that kind of pinched cheek look that it gives me to be very natural. And I think it's something that a lot of you will really enjoy. I have certainly enjoyed it. But then Essence rolled around and they said, what a tint, lip and cheek tint. And it's essentially, you know, their alternative to the Benetton. Packaging is even the same. It's actually glass, whereas the Benetton is plastic. So whether or not you're a glass or plastic person, something to keep in mind. It has a cute little doe foot applicator. I mean, in general, I was really excited to see that they launched this. I will say, so the Benetton has a very light kind of fruity smell to it. Something I noticed immediately with the Essence is that it smells like straight strawberry. It's a very, very intense kind of fruity smell, but not intense in a bad way. I think for the lips, this would be a little bit more of a pleasurable uh, scent. You do get 0.20 ounces in the Benetton. You get a little bit less in the Essence, but you know, price per ounce, the Essence is definitely still a better bang for your buck. How does it work? How does it apply? Something that I immediately noticed um, between these two products and the difference, and something that I consistently notice when I try products that are supposedly supposed to be, you know, that alternative to Benetton. This has more pigment and it's a little bit harder to finesse. Not a cheek stain that you can just apply straight onto the cheeks and blend out without you feeling like there's a little bit of that stain stripe on the cheek. I think it's better to apply this onto a brush and then blend it out. But even then, I just find that it's a lot of pigment for me. However, if you do have a deeper skin tone, I actually think this is probably going to work better for you. If you are a little bit on the more fair side like I am and you still want to work with the essence, I would say maybe just apply this under your foundation and then apply a very sheer amount on top. And because it'll be right directly on the skin, I do think that the stain will last a little bit longer. I think there's ways to work with this. For me personally though, save or splurge, I definitely know myself. I know what I'm going to be reaching for. I'm still going to be reaching for the Benetint personally. I love how easy it is. Cha-Cha Tint in specific is like one of my favorite 
uh, cheek products ever. I love how lightweight it is. It feels like nothing. And I like the ease of use. I think sometimes you pay for ease of use when it comes to a higher end or a mid-range product. I do think that there's something to this Essence Lip and Cheek Tint, but for me personally, I'm going to be continuing to use Benetton. Now, another product that really mystified a lot of us when it launched. It's the Jones Road Miracle Balm. Now this shade is the shade Flushed. First of all, I wanna say there's something about the way this smells. It's just like so herbal and spa-like. I really, really enjoy the way this smells. I'm sure you guys have seen this enough, but like the ads of this product, I mean, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but essentially this is a balm that you like break the seal on it and then under it it's this kind of flush of sheer pigment i think it's very unique but i also think with uniqueness comes its own set of challenges really the purpose of this product is to add some moisture to the skin to add a very slight kind of flush of color it's just supposed to give you that kind of healthy look to your cheeks I don't think it really plays well in the makeup realm. I see this more as a skincare product with um, a bit of color. And I think that's going to be very important when I talk a little bit more about this product right here that Revolution came out with. For me personally, I never find myself reaching for these because they just feel very tacky on my skin. They don't really offer me enough color. And I find that it can also kind of mess with the other makeup I have going on. However, like a sunscreen all over the face, a little bit of this on the cheeks and lips, I can really see why people enjoy these. I understand it. I just think for me as a makeup user, I just have not reached for them a lot. However, I appreciate the innovation. You know, I think that there's a difference, um, you know, because I love makeup so much, I see some makeup products as interesting, unique, um, and I love them as like concepts. I don't know if that makes sense. I love this as a concept. As a product I use all the time, I don't. Revolution came out with these multi-use balms. They're in these little tins, which I think some of you will really appreciate. I like that you can recycle them after. And even in the pan, you can see it kind of has this similar texture to the Jones Road. But these are really not all that meets the eye. Something that I think a lot of people thought the Jones Road was, was like just colored Vaseline but it's really not there there is more to this formula the way it kind of the way it kind of holds up on its own um i think that though it does have a tack to it it's actually not super slippy necessarily you know it goes on and it kind of sticks where you place it this one from revolution this is pretty much just vaseline with color in it it messes with the other makeup that i have going on um, it's incredibly dewy. I mean, the Jones Road is dewy. It, it's got a dew to it. But this stuff is crazy dewy. It almost kind of feels like, you know, like the Rosebud solves. I forget who makes them, but this to me just feels like a, a lip balm. I can see, again, using this more so as, you know, I apply a little sunscreen, put this on the cheeks and lips. I get it. Yeah, I can see you using it this way, but as a cheek product, I have not really liked it much. And I know a lot of you guys were talking about these, hoping that they would be a good alternative to the Miracle Balms, but I think they're just two different things. So Savor Splurge, I think if you're interested in the Miracle Balms from Jones Road, I do think that it might be worth checking them out. And I would personally skip the ones from Revolution, but all of that with the caveat that for me personally, I just haven't fallen in love with this the way I know um, other people have. Next up, we have the Glossier Future Dew. Some of you may know on my channel that I have loved this product for a really long time. It is essentially an oil serum hybrid. It's kind of like an emulsion. And when you apply it onto the skin, it just leaves this beautiful radiance that lasts all day. It's kind of like a skincare makeup hybrid product that for me, 
as opposed to some other products. I think that this is really getting somewhere. The way it layers under makeup is beautiful. It also isn't like a mica heavy product, you know, the way that some glow lotion products are. It doesn't exaggerate texture. It feels nourishing on the skin. My skin feels better when I'm using it. If I'm really sick, if I have flaking skin, and I know that if I apply makeup on, like it's not gonna be good, like it's not gonna look good. I just find that this often saves the day. And I've just been a fan of it for a really long time. Glossier recently launched to Sephora. I've been revisiting a lot of Glossier products. I don't think all of them are great, but this is one that I still think is really beautiful. However, I got a little package from Hard Candy recently. Um, I don't use a lot of Hard Candy products, but they sent me this Sheer Envy Glow Serum Primer. And when I put it out in my hand, I was immediately reminded of the Glossier Future Dew. The texture itself is pretty similar, though when you pump it out, it has this really vibrant kind of gold color to it. But when you blend it out, that color does sheer out pretty readily. It's not going to be super, super bronzy. And it just leaves you intense glow, a ton of dewiness. And on the skin, I think they look really similar. The only kind of difference I notice as far as the formula goes is the hard candy kind of smells like a lip product. It just, again, it's kind of like that fruity scent and the texture of it is slippier. It feels, I mean, there's no way this is gonna set down necessarily on the skin. However, I do think it'll sink in eventually. And it is hydrating enough as well. But I think some of you, especially if you have oily skin, I think this would not work well for you. Just not a product I would recommend. And really, I don't think I'd recommend the Future Dew either. But for dry skin, I could see you applying this all over the skin and really enjoying that glow. But again, it just has a little bit of this spreadable quality that I don't know how you guys are gonna feel about it. When I apply foundation on top of these, I don't really see a huge difference, honestly, in the actual finish of my makeup. I think they both work really well. So personally, I think that you should splurge on the Glossier Future Dew if you really are seeking a primer with skincare benefits. This has more skincare benefits to it. The ingredients list is better. It's going to feel really nice on this skin. However, if you're just looking for a super glowy primer that's really just going to add that really dewy effect to your skin if you have more dry skin, I think you can definitely save and go with the Sheer Envy Glow Serum Primer. I see myself using this also to mix into products, but for all over my face, I think I'm probably going to reach more for the Future Dew just because I like the skincare benefits of it specifically. But again, if you're not really concerned with that, I would definitely look into this. I also wanted to do a quick comparison to a product that I no longer have, so unfortunately I don't have a demo, but I kind of wanted to talk about this Woe Glow from e.l.f. Skin. It's essentially e.l.f.'s take on the Super Goo Glow Screen. Um, as I've continued to use Glow Screen, I did used to like it, but for me, I would really, really say to save your money <laughs> and not purchase it because it really irritates the eyes. And I do know so many people with sensitive skin that I've also used it and it just burns their skin. For me, it didn't burn my skin, but on a couple of occasions, maybe like too much got around my eyes or something and my eyes felt like they were not feeling great. So as I've continued to use that product, I would not recommend it. However, you know, e.l.f. came out with their Woe Glow, and I do think that there are some um, better things about this formula, um, not just the price. I think that the formula sets down a little bit more, so it's going to work better for more of a range of skin types. It just has this kind of self-setting quality. It's also... I think a little bit less mica than the one from Supergoop personally. Something I don't like though is that it just, it's so sunscreeny. It really, really smells like sunscreen. And also because it does set down, it does have a little bit less mica than the glow screen from Supergoop. I do think that it's really not gonna give as much glow as people might want from a product like this. I say save your money. Do not get the glow screen from Supergoop. I would say tentatively, don't get this one. 
the Sun Touchable from e.l.f. Just pick up this one from Can Make. It is the Can Make Mermaid Skin UV Gel SPF 50. One, it's more SPF than you're gonna get from the e.l.f. And this layers beautifully under makeup. It does give you this soft glow. It doesn't have like a bronzy pearl the way that the Super Goop does, but the overall look on the skin is better. It does not smell like sunscreen. It's super thin on the skin as well. It's like a breeze to reapply. And in general, I just find that with sunscreen, though it's really nice, to be able to rely on a sunscreen for just that glowy bronzed effect. I understand why people really want that. I do think that the number one reason to be reaching for sunscreen, sorry to be like a mom, but I think the number one reason is that we really want excellent protection and we need a formula that is going to be really easy to apply, to reapply and feel effortless to apply to the skin. You know, it's not a bother to apply to the skin. And the one from e.l.f. still kind of feels like a bother. The glow screen, again, feels a little bit bothersome to me. This one I reapply and apply all the time. Again, it's one of the absolute best out there. Great protection to this one. So saver splurge, I would definitely save and go with this one from Can Make. Next up, we have this product from Tower 28. It is the Sculptino in the shade Broad. This is essentially like a contour bronzer from Tower 28. I was really excited about this launch because one, I just really enjoy this color. I love the shade range as well. And for me, I've just always been a fan of Tower 28's packaging. I love how thin it is, really easy to slide into a purse. And in general, I'm just a cream bronzer lover, so I'm always looking to try new formulas. You get 0.16 ounces of product in here. And the first couple of times I wore this, I really liked it. It just felt like very natural makeup. It was just nice and creamy on the skin. Again, I really enjoyed the color and the way it applies is really nice. Like it, it's not a really fussy product necessarily. However, this doesn't pack a lot of pigment. So I find myself kind of building it up a little bit and not even honestly, like I'm not gonna go in with more than two layers, but even at layer number two, I find that it looks heavy on my skin. And unfortunately, I've had that issue with some of Tower 28's other cream formulas. I know that people really love the cream cheek products. And I know a lot of people that have really enjoyed these, but honestly, I just found it to look too makeup being too creamy on the skin, I'm really trying to find a balance when I'm talking about cream makeup. I want it to be creamy and hydrating and pretty, but I don't want it to look heavy. I don't want it to pick up the other products around it. Not that this necessarily does that, but you know, I have high standards when it comes to my cream products. I, again, I've tried hundreds of cream blushes and bronzers and this one just didn't cut it for me. I think if you want something that's more affordable, that still does have a really great shade range and looks really lightweight on the skin, I would go with the e.l.f. putty bronzers. I will say that if you have super dry skin, this probably isn't going to be your ideal formula, but I do think that this kind of formula, this putty kind of cream to powder formula, I see this working for more skin types. Shade Tan Lines is also very similar to the shade Broad from Tower 28. So if you still want a cream bronzer that's going to look pretty on the skin. It's going to be creamy, but again, not too creamy, heavy, and thick on the skin. I would personally say go with the e.l.f. putty bronzers. Next up, let's talk about the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blushes. Can I first say, like, the writing on here is already coming off. I haven't even had this product for maybe more than a couple of months. But anyway, this is a newer launch from Essence. This is the shade Pretty Peach. And I really liked this blush, but I wasn't reaching for it a ton. Sometimes I really like a baked formula. Sometimes I think that they can have too much like mica in them and they can be too luminous and kind of exaggerate texture. It really depends. Some baked formulas can actually smooth texture. So really, you know, it takes a little bit of experimenting, but I think that this formula is absolutely beautiful. I do have it on my cheeks today, and I find that if you just want a soft glow on your cheeks, 
something to just wash over and just look really pretty and healthy. For me, this feels like a little bit of a more perfecting version of a product like Luminoso from Milani. There's not as much pearl, but there's still a really nice luminous look to the skin. You get a ton of product, and in general, it's just really pretty. However, this isn't a super expensive product, but it is another baked blush that's still pretty new, and it's from Well People. They're the Super Power, Super Powder blush powder. These have a little bit more pigment to them, and I honestly prefer the shade selection and these ones from well people but as i've been comparing them side to side i really thought i was going to be coming on here and saying i think you guys should splurge on these but after seeing them side by side i think the essence one has a better blend and it just looks a little bit more flattering on the skin i think the ones from well people might have a little bit too much pigment and can sometimes be a little bit more difficult to apply however if you need a little bit more pigmentation I think the Well People might be a better fit for you because these don't have, you know, the ones from Essence don't have a ton of pigmentation. So it's gonna depend on what you're looking for, but for me personally, I would say save and go with Essence. Um, About Face actually isn't a super expensive brand, but these lip color butters have been going pretty viral. A lot of people have been talking about them. Um, and I have the shade, the cranberries. I think a lip color butter is a really good way to put this. It, to me, just feels like very high shine, glossy lipstick. It's gonna give you a lot of pigment, and that's why I think the lip color butters is such a good way of putting it because you just get a lot of pigment and a lot of thick, not that they're overly thick, but you know, it's definitely a buttery, creamy product when it goes on. And I think that for those of you that really appreciate a lot of pigment, even with a glossy formula, it's probably going to be right up your alley. However, I do think they're difficult to apply because they're so pigmented, especially this shade, the shade The Cranberries, though I really like this shade. I find it's just a little bit more difficult to be precise with this. Really nice kind of fruity scent. I don't have a lot of complaints about it. I do think that the shade selection is really pretty. Again, this kind of black cherry shade is right up my alley. I gotta be honest with myself, you know, I'm going for ease of use when it comes to makeup. And, you know, especially with a lip product, I just kind of want to apply it and be out the door. I don't like to have to fuss, so I do think that this is a little fussy. However, Flower Beauty came up with the Plump Up Gloss Sticks. This is a very similar kind of formula to the About Face, except I think it's a little bit thinner and a little bit less pigment. So I would say if you're looking for that easy to use, just like a very thin kind of gloss serum stick, I think the Flower Beauty might actually be a better fit for you because it's just a bit thinner and it feels just like more of an effortless kind of makeup product. It kind of feels like a lip oil in a stick, not necessarily a lip gloss because it's so thin. Whereas the About Face to me feels more like that lip gloss lipstick hybrid. But I am gonna kind of do a change up on you guys. If either of these formulas sound good to you, I think that you should go with these. But for me, personally. The Charlotte Tilbury Hyaluronic Happy Kiss is the true winner in my heart. <laughs> it fills in the lines of the lips. It feels cushiony, um, which neither of these feel cushiony to me. And so I really like when my lip products have like a creamy, almost lip balm feel. So if you're expecting a lip balm texture with either of these, I think that you might even be better going off with the Charlotte Tilbury one. I like that it fills in the lines of my lips. The shade Pillow Talk I think will look beautiful on like everyone. Just a beautiful rose shade and in general, I find that my lips just appreciate the one from Charlotte Tilbury more. It also has a very light kind of vanilla scent. It's not like, I don't know, I feel like these are nice smell wise, but it, the one from About Face is slightly obnoxious with the fruit. The one from Flower Beauty is kind of like a fruity vanilla. You know, this one's not bad, honestly. But for me personally, I think that the Hyaluronic Happy Kiss formula from Charlotte Tilbury is like a total hidden gem. A lot of people don't talk about it, but I think that if you like that liquid lip balm texture, but you just want it in a stick, 
that might be a better option. But of course, I love to do these videos because I'm just able to go in detail on all the different formulas and then let you guys be able to truly find the one that's going to work best for you. You know, that's just my ultimate goal is to, you know, hook you guys up with the formulas that are going to be best for you. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Love to have you back. So make sure to subscribe before you go and I will see you guys in my next one.